Well, across the country, there's been a dramatic spike in the number of break-ins and even armed robberies at our neighborhood pharmacies. Courtney Dioff takes a look at the personal toll prescription drug abuse has not just on the attic, but their victims. Just wanted to ask. Prescription drugs are being counted. Counted on by people who need them and people who don't. As prescription drug abuse rises, pharmacists are getting their own prescription for violence. He pulls a gun or he has a gun back out and he's got it back in my forehead. Good, how are you? For Chad Jones, a pharmacist at Chelsea Family Pharmacy, a typical Monday evening at work turned into a living nightmare for him and a co-worker. When someone came in the front door and I, I knew this guy, I had had, I'd seen him previously and he had come into our pharmacy before with a fake prescription and um, it was fake because it was just a photocopied prescription and so there was no real signature and um, I told him, you know, I'm not going to fill this for you. I said, in fact, why don't you never come back in the store again? Six months later, the same drug addict came back into the store, this time with armed robbery on his mind. And then he kind of meandered around and he had a sack in his hand, like a brown paper grocery sack. And the only thing that was going through my mind was that he's going to take something from out front. And I said, Steve, I said, uh, you just need to leave. He said, you need to get behind the counter and, and give me your drugs and put the gun in my, in my face. He pulled it out of the grocery sack and he started telling me to get the Oxycontin, give me all your Oxycontin and put it in the sack. So he handed me the sack and I just gave all the Oxycontin we had. And I said, what else do you want? And he said, I need um, Roxycoda. I need all your Roxycoda. Meanwhile, he's made Channing lay on the floor and he's yelling at her, you need to be quiet, little girl, and I won't hurt you. Just be quiet and I won't hurt you. And I was like, Channing, it's okay, you know, just a second. The robber then forced Jones and his pharmacy technician, Channing, to lie on the floor. And he makes me lay by Channing and we're kind of laying head to head like this. And um, I put my hand on her and I'm trying to calm her down because she's like screaming and and everything and then I think he's gonna leave and um, pretty soon I guess Channing was kind of watching her out of the corner of his eye she said he pulled the hammer out of the sack and then he came over and I, I was looking at Channing like this laying head to head and he just came straight down and hit me right behind the ear with the first blow and that was just pretty much knocked me silly Jones and his co-worker would never be the same. I covered Channing and I covered my head. When I did, he came straight down and just like hit me right on top of the head. That's where I broke my fingers. Uh, I crushed a couple of fingers. Then I lay back down beside Channing and um, I just remember blood being everywhere. Robberies and break-ins like this are on the rise and they're changing the lives of people like Jones who are just trying to do their job. My life hasn't been the same since, in the sense that I just have a, always have a sense of vigilance. I mean, I'm always looking out for someone. That's the biggest thing that I've noticed. And it's just stressful for me to always be on edge. The headaches daily, I mean, they're, some are pretty severe. They, I mean, I just don't want to move, lay in bed in a dark room, don't move. Um, and fatigue, I'm still having a lot of fatigue where I just can't go for very long, maybe like four or five hours. And then I'm just to the point that I just, so tired I feel almost sick feeling. Well, since we first brought you that story, Chad has seen some improvement in the head injuries he sustained, but they've also sold their pharmacy.